Last week, Royal Caribbean spoke with investors about the state of its business, and it shed some light on some interesting topics, including how full will your cruise ship be when you sail on it? I've got everything they said up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and I don't think there's any other question right now that is being asked quite as frequently as how full will my ship be when I go on it? Royal Caribbean has been operating at a reduced capacity since it started back up this summer, but they've been pretty quiet as to exactly how full any one sailing will be in advance. In fact, Royal Caribbean has not divulged any information in advance as to what you should expect in terms of how full your ship will be, and that has led a lot of people to be wondering, will it be completely empty, half full, completely full, and when will that change? These are really common questions. But reduced capacity was introduced as a way to assist with social distancing when cruises were starting back up earlier this year, right in the heart of the pandemic. But it has made cruising this year such a pleasure, quite frankly, because there's been really no waits for things like elevators, pool chairs, buffets, or pretty much anything on board because there are so few guests on board. While reduced capacity was introduced as a health protocol to help make things a little bit better and safer, it's actually ended up being one of the best things to happen in cruise lines in a long time. And we knew this wouldn't last forever, but quite frankly, it's been really nice having it in the time being. But the question remains, how much longer will reduced capacity be in effect? And what should we expect for cruises coming up at the end of this year and in 2022? So to answer those questions, Royal Caribbean actually talked about this. And the reason why Royal Caribbean addressed this particular issue is because this has to do with revenue. In short, the more people on a cruise ship, the more revenue they're going to be generating, not only just from your cruise fare, but from the spending you'll be doing on board, things like drink packages, shore excursions, Wi-Fi, spa, and everything else in between, right? So the more people on board the ship they can put on there, the higher their revenues are going to be, which is good news for Wall Street. And that's been a big question because Royal Caribbean has been able to get ships back into service. They've actually prioritized getting ships back quicker rather than getting them full, just getting ships with a lower amount of passengers back on board. So that way they need to get back in service. Royal Caribbean says that they believe that having as many ships back in service as possible come, say, January will put them in a really good position financially to be able to start increasing capacity from there. But let's talk about capacity because everyone wants to know what to expect from it. And if you've been on a cruise or you've been paying attention to cruises over the last, I would say, 30 to 60 days, then you've definitely noticed that on some ships, there has been higher numbers of passengers on board. In fact, a number of sailings have had more than 50% capacity on board, which has been kind of this invisible threshold of getting back to quote unquote normal. During the call with investors, Royal Caribbean International President and CEO, Michael Bailey, talked about the fact that even Freedom of the Seas recently sailed at 85% capacity. His exact quote was, we've brought back significantly more capacity, ships, beds, and berths than any of our competitors by a significant amount. And what that means is that operationally and logistically, we've already climbed over that mountain and we've now got a large number of our assets available for booking. And more importantly, we've gone through and absorbed all of those expenses, end quote. So when might Royal Caribbean truly get back to full capacity across the board? Royal Caribbean Group Chief Financial Officer Jason Liberty said somewhere around summer 2022 is the plan for now, quote, we're kind of preparing our business to maximize our revenues and profitability in this very kind of lucrative peak summer season, end quote. In addition to these quotes, in Royal Caribbean's financial disclosures they put as part of their third quarter 2021 financial statements, Royal Caribbean Group says it will move load factors up to 65 to 70% during the fourth quarter of this 2021 financial cycle. Royal Caribbean Group expects all ships on core itineraries in the fourth quarter will be cash flow accretive even when including startup costs. And by the end of the year, Royal Caribbean Group says that 50 out of the 61 ships that have returned to service will represent almost 100% of core itinerary capacity and approximately 80% of worldwide capacity. The remaining cruise ships are expected to return by the spring of 2022 and return to, quote, historical load factors, end quote, in the third quarter of 2022. One major exception will be mainland China, which is going to be operating at lower load factors because of some of the regional issues they've got dealing with in terms of their health protocols related to cruises from China. So what does this mean? Well, first of all, when we talk about Royal Caribbean Group, we have to remember we're not just talking about Royal Caribbean International. We're talking about their sister brands as well, Celebrity Cruises and Silver Sea, among some other brands that Royal Caribbean has partial ownership in. So when they're talking about these 50 out of 61 ships, that refers not just to Royal Caribbean International, but also the other companies as well. But the key thing here is they're talking about in the fourth quarter, moving load factors, load factors being the amount of passengers on board to 65 to 70%. 
And then piggybacking on what Mr. Bailey said earlier that we mentioned, we're looking at maybe we, as we get into the spring, closer to 100% capacity as we move into certainly summer 2022. So again, we're thinking about 60 to 70% capacity towards the end of this year in 2021, and then moving into 2022 full capacity. Now, Royal Caribbean did say during the call, by the way, all of this is really based on the idea that things are going to continue as they are, that unexpected surprises, a new deadly variant, another pandemic, who knows what else could certainly impact that. But this is kind of what they're thinking. So if you have a cruise coming up here in the next couple of months, if your sailing is closer to today than further, there will probably still be some level of reduced capacity. And let's face it, even if you're on a ship that is 80% full, 90% full, that is still a great experience because pre-pandemic, if I was on a cruise ship that only had 90% capacity, I would say it almost feels empty, relatively speaking, of course, because back before the pandemic, cruise ships were full all the time. And you would definitely notice if you were missing 100 or even 1,000 guests on board. So 65 to 70% is definitely higher than what it has been during the summer. But don't take that to be like, oh, gosh, the good times are over. We're just simply moving back in the direction of normalcy, so to speak. Somewhat related to all of this is the future of protocols, and I think a lot of people also want to know about that with more people on board. What's it going to look like in terms of protocols? And as you may or may not know, Royal Caribbean and their other cruise lines got an update from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, last week, saying that they will extend the conditional sailing order by another two and a half months. But in January, the CSO, which is these rules and regulations the CDC has on the cruise industry, will move from a mandatory to voluntary state in January. So this two and a half months essentially is a means of which to kind of extend the process, but also transition into this voluntary process. And one investor wanted to know, well, what is Royal Caribbean really thinking about, about vaccine mandates across different age demographics going into next year? And Mr. Bailey said that Royal Caribbean is working with the CDC to make that change. He says, quote, while the CSO comes to a kind of technical end on January the 15th, we will continue our ongoing collaboration with the CDC in terms of the protocols that will voluntarily operate after the CSO expires. They certainly, and we, want to make sure that we're operating safely, and they're also well aware of some of the protocols that we have in place will naturally fall away as the pandemic moves further and further in the rearview mirror. I think as we move into 2022, hopefully what we'll see is the protocols become easier and less cumbersome for our customers, end quote. So that's kind of an idea that, again, as we move towards more passengers on board, as everything returns to normalcy, we're going to see some of these protocols go away. Which ones? It's anyone's guess at this point. Who knows what to expect? But the bottom line is that Royal Caribbean is moving in this direction. And if you're somebody who's been sitting on the sidelines saying, Matt, I love cruising, but I just haven't been loving some of these requirements on board in terms of these health protocols for whichever reason, that's okay. The good news is perhaps there'll be an opportunity for you to get back on board with less protocols and less stringent requirements as it relates to getting on board the ship and your onboard experience. So let me know in the comments below what you think of these changes. And did you get a chance to go on a cruise ship while there was reduced capacity? Are you excited for more people to be back on board? I kind of am. While I enjoyed having less people on board overall, certain venues, certain activities are just not the same without a lot of people. It's a lot more fun being in a sing-along piano bar at the schooner bar or with the guitarist in the pub, if there's other people there to sing, if it's just you, it's kind of awkward in that regard. And if you're watching a football game on the movie screen, if you're participating in one of these fun stage shows, the comedian, it's just better to have more people there. It's that communal experience you just got to have. Karaoke being a classic example of that. So anyway, I want to know what you think about having more passengers on board and which sailings you have booked coming up here at the end of the year or in early 2022. Keeping in mind, by the way, all of this is as they see it today. This could all change, but I wanted to keep you all up to date as to what Royal Caribbean is thinking because after all, capacity numbers are a big question with a lot of cruise fans out there. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notifications so that way YouTube lets you know when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.